Hey guys, Deathsletter Magic here, and good news, everyone! The invocations from Hour of Devastation have been fully spoiled. Now, a couple days ago, or like one day ago or something, I don't know, wasn't really paying that close of attention, we only really had three of them, so now we have all of them, and it uh, looks pretty cool. I would call this um, From the Vault Annihilation 2.0. Oh, except they included a bunch of stuff that should have been in that. So that one was all about explosions, destruction, and noteworthy cards to do with that. So I think that's really cool. I'm already interested in a lot of these. And the cool news is they're not terribly expensive either. Well, I mean, I doubt some vendor actually posted the pre-order prices. Although, just kidding, I totally wouldn't doubt it if somebody did. But we don't really know where these are going to settle in at. But um, considering I sell cards professionally... Um, I might be able to weigh in pretty well, but some of these are really, really, really unpredictable. So don't take any of my estimations, uh, too seriously. So first off, we've got Armageddon, which actually was in From the Vault Annihilation. Um, it looked amazing. It's the only FTV card I own, by the way. I traded for it. So very happy about that. But, um, yeah, just straight up destroy all lands. And, uh, since that card's unreadable garbage, it's, um, three generic and one white. Four cost sorcery. There, I just translated it from Egyptian for you. Regular is about three bucks. Uh, from the vaults, like six bucks. Um, it's really hard to say what this one will be, but I doubt it'll be above fifteen. I just don't think people play this a lot. It's so narrow because it blows up your own lands, your opponents too, but also yours. By the way, I don't know what's going on, but the artwork looks really like dark but pale. Like not like oh pitch black, cool high contrast, just washed. Just a really really narrow luminosity range. And I mean on, like, all these. Anyway, Avatar of Woe. Um, this card is interesting, but, um, unfortunately it was just printed as a, uh, mythic in Conspiracy uh, 2 or whatever, Take the Crown. Um, I have a copy of it, so I already know what it's worth. About two bucks. So, <laughs> I don't see this being great, but I do like the card. I mean, it's insane. It costs eight. It's black. It's a creature. It's an avatar. Avatars are insane. Um, if there are ten or more creature cards total in all graveyards, Avatar of Woe costs six less to cast. So, two. Hello. It has fear. Hello. And um, uh, it can tap and then destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. So, it is a creature that can come out for two and blow stuff up repeatedly. That's insane, but it is the definition of slow. I mean, this is, like, so late game. Now, there are ways to artificially stuff graveyards, but, um, you know, it's not that great of a card. Once again, the artwork looks kind of pale. I mean, it's neat. I like it. I, th I think it looks cool. It's just, it's really pale. Whatever. Next up, we got the bomb itself, Blood Frickin' Moon. Of course this was in there, because, I mean... I don't really have a reason, but look at the artwork. It looks super Hour of Devastation-ish. So, depending upon where you buy it um, and what edition, Blood Moon floats in around like 18 to 24 bucks or something like that. I mean, some of them are like a lot more uh, retail, but um, yeah, it was just printed. I mean, we're talking MM3 here, and a lot of these cards were in MM3, so people are saying, oh, it ruined the price. It ruined the value. I don't even want to open one of these now because they're worthless, which is an exaggeration, obviously. Sorry, but you just have to put card availability above price and value and, you know, you personally winning the jackpot by opening one of these. People need to play the game first and foremost. You do not need to maintain value and make sure single sellers make money and investors and blah, 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 blah. You need to make sure people can play your game. The players come first, value comes second, so the fact that they included Blood Moon in MM3 I do not think was a mistake. Yeah, detrimentally, you know, affected the uh, prices of these, but whatever. So if you're not familiar, this is the Great Equalizer, non-basic lands or mountains. That is the end of the game for most people in, in uh, well, in, uh, modern at least. Next up, straight from my top 10 most hated cards ever printed in the history of the game, Boil. Destroy all islands. I do not need to go into why that's unfair. If you're playing blue, you lose the game. If you're not, this card does nothing. Seriously, this card should have been banned from Modern a long time ago. It is just so stupidly situational and unfair, I cannot stand it. I could care less what it's worth, and I'm not going to look it up. 
Next up, Capsize. I've never personally heard of this. Uh, buyback three, that's cool. Return target permanent to its owner's hand uh, for three. That's not very good. Oh, thank God, it's $1.80. There is some kind of FNM foil promo floating around for allegedly 25 bucks retail. Not really sure if that's the real price, like on the actual open market. But uh, yeah, I don't think this will even come in at that. I mean, Cyclonic Rift is just better. But uh, next up, we've got... Why the hell not choke the other card from my top 10 most hated cards of all time? Islands don't untap during their controller's untap steps. So in other words, boil. This card can go burn in hell. I don't care what it's worth. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know about it. I hate it. Next up, we've got Damnation, which uh, used to be worth money. Um, oh, well, they missed FTV Annihilation with this card, so might as well throw it in here. Uh, it's another one of those 16 to $22 cards that's a modern staple. Um, destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Typical uh, blackboard wipe there as a sorcery. So I think this one will be very high. Like, we're talking maybe 60 plus at least temporarily and have some staying power because this card is just utterly famous and it is drastically underprinted even after being an MM3. Next up, oh yeah, it's ya boy, Desolation Angel. The text honestly looks like Desolator Angel, so... Well, there's, there's an eye there, too, but whatever. We're just going to call it Desolator Angel, because that's way cooler. I mean, that bro in the artwork is a little bit more fit than I am, but, uh, you know, whatevs. He actually kind of looks like Harvey Birdman, too. Anyway, cost five, kicker, double white, but the cost is double black. Kind of funny. I've actually never heard of this card, strangely enough. I know that'll shock some of you. But um, it's a flyer. It's a 5-4. That's cool. And when it enters the battlefield, destroy all lands you control. If it was kicked, destroy all lands in play basically so assuming you can afford the kicker which you can't um it's an armageddon on a stick except you get a creature so it's it's like the two for one super punch um i don't think i'd be casting this for five though straight up i mean there are like blue cards that are like seven sevens or something that are like hey you're screwed as soon as this enters the battlefield and nobody plays those this card's about two bucks right now so if this hits like 10 i'm totally buying it who am I kidding? I'll just trade for it. Uh, next up, Diabolic... What the hell does that say? <laughs> Edict, I guess? Two cost, black generic. Uh, it's an instant. Target player sacrifices a creature. Absolute classic, apparently. I've never heard of it. I've only been playing for like four or five years, three years. I, I don't even know. Something like that. Basically, uh, right before M14 cycled out. So I don't play a whole lot of Commander or Modern either. So yeah, it's not that strange for me to... Uh, uh, not be familiar with these. Oh my god, they actually have this one on pre-order already for 30 bucks on Card Kingdom. That's weird, none of the rest of them showed up. Uh, but the other Diabolic Intent is, uh, 20 bucks, and it was from Plane Shift, and I don't see it in any other set according to them. So this might actually be worth some money, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a force kill card, it's, uh, their choice, but it'll get around hexproof and indestructible, so hey. Next up, Doomsday. Uh, once again, never heard of this. Um, triple black, though. And that's it. Just triple black. Sorcery. Can't wait to see what this does. Search your library and graveyard for five cards and exile the rest. Oh my god, I think I have heard of this. Put the chosen cards on top of your library in any order. You lose half your life rounded up. Okay, I have heard of this card. It is absolutely insane in Commander. It is like suicide craziness. A lot of people cast it just for fun, especially if they're losing the game, but then again, I think a lot of people like have something actually constructive to do with it. I mean, it's only about a $5 card, but it hasn't been printed in a long freaking time, so uh, I could see this kind of going up, because people think it's really cool. Next up, Forbid. What is going on with this artwork? It's, it's just so pale. It's not bright. It's not dark. It's just like gray. I really hope they don't look like this in reality, but um, some of the masterpieces, not from this block, but the last couple, I think, uh, the whole thing was like a Pokemon card reverse foil, where the artwork was 100% matte, you couldn't see any foil, and then the foil was on the rest of the card. I really hope that this doesn't indicate that that's what they did, but it kind of looks like it. So anyway, forbid, uh, buy back, discard two cards, that's kind of cool, counter target spell. Hey, if this is your ace in the hole that you got left in your hand and you're, you got a bunch of garbage like lands or something, this will do you a hell of a lot more good than a cancel. 
Now, strangely enough, this is only about a $2 card once again. I mean, I think they just went for flavor and famous cards, powerful cards, the best of kind of cards, and, you know, just said, screw the dollar amount, basically. Hey, I'd want a copy, but I think it's cool. Uh, next up, Lord of Extinction. Now, this is interesting because that might be uh, one of the gods, and it looks like an arachnid. Uh, I don't believe anything like that has been spoiled yet, so... <laughs> Whoops. Uh, there's eight gods. We know five of them. Then we know the scorpion gods, so I'm going to say this is some kind of creepy spider god. Anyway, cost five, black, green. Boy, is that hard to see without the color coding. Um, Lord of Extinction's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in all graveyards, so it's some ghetto version of Night Howler. Okay, somehow, I guess because this is from Alara Remoran as a Mythic, it's $18. Well, I mean, I guess it's better than Night Howler because Night Howler is just creatures. I mean, I was mostly just kidding there, but usually Night Howler is good enough is what I'm saying. Um... But I don't know, I could see this guy coming out as like a 30-30 like a or something. I mean, it depends who you're playing and what you're playing and what format and when he comes out and stuff. But like, damn, he'd get virtually killed by a Tormod script. But um, I mean, it is all graveyards. I could see this being pretty hot. I mean, this thing could hit like 50, maybe 40. I don't know, hard to say. Next up, coming in from Urza's Legacy. Oh boy, it's a double black, double generic uh, enchantment. Whenever a creature deals damage to you, destroy it. That's right. No mercy. This is insanely powerful. You bet I've heard of this card. I think we might have a winner. I think this might even beat out like Blood Moon and Damnation. It's hard to say. Because I don't know how many people really play it. But I mean, I don't need to explain to you how this might be a little bit powerful. Plus some... Um, why the hell are the Vidalcan here? Like, are those like blue mummies? Or are they the sand people from Star Wars? Or... I don't know what's going on. Next up, the legend. Oh, yes. Omniscience, the 10 cost enchantment. Um, I guess since it was an enchantment, it wasn't in the last set of invocations. Otherwise, it kind of flavor wise seems like it would be. But uh, yeah, you may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. And guess what? They usually get out omniscience without paying its cost. I know. Ironic. Whoops. Oh, you protected it with the 10 cost and people don't respect that at all. They're just free casting it. Yeah, welcome to magic. It's broken. So um, this is a $25 card because it was only ever in uh, M13, I believe, according to Card Kingdom. Probably shouldn't be using them. Probably should be using the Gatherer, but oh well. We're already this far into it. A lot of people run that stupid combo, so yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Opposition. Oh boy, another blue enchantment. Tap an untapped creature you control and tap target artifact creature or land. Could be yours, could be theirs. Oh boy, didn't make it into my tap dance deck because it's just not that good. That's more about untapping the tapping. Tapping you can do at will. It's the untapping you have to worry about. By the way, that artwork looks freaking amazing. I love it. The artwork on the first two versions of this is complete crap. From, uh, well, no, that's not, well... There's one from Legends, there's one from Urza's, there's one from 7th, and they all look like crap. So, I don't even care which ones I was referring to. I mean, seriously, the 7th edition one looks like they're doing the Dragon Ball Z fusion dance. But, um, yeah, about a $4 card, apparently. Um, that's a shame. I mean, this looks so amazing. It's blue. I like it. I might pick it up if I, you know, have just too much money laying around. So, don't hold your breath. Next up, an absolute classic, Shatterstorm. Um, destroy all artifacts that can't be regenerated. Keep it real simple. Classic red. Absolutely love it. It's a shame it's a sorcery. It's also a shame it's about a $2 card. Actually, no, you can pick it up for like 30 cents, actually, if you get it from the right set. Ouch. It's been printed a lot in the past. Not terribly recently, but a lot. I just don't see this going above like 15 bucks. That's a shame. Artwork looks cool. Next up, one of the five packed. Oh, yes, Slaughter Packed, the one that doesn't start with the word packed. I thought they all did, but honestly, I don't remember what the other three are. So, destroy target non-black creatures. Seriously, who are those blue people, though? Like, what's going on there? Anyway, destroy target non-black creature. At the beginning of your next upkeep, pay three. If you don't, you lose the game, and it costs zero. Honestly, just stick with Doomblade. Uh, that said, this is about a $7 card. So, the invocation version, uh, probably gonna run, you know, some money. I mean, it's it's not an absolute loss. Maybe like 20 bucks or something. But seriously, who are the blue people? 
And why does Nicol Bolas bother? Okay, when he first arrived, according to the storyline, he vaporized anybody over the age of two by, like, blinking. He didn't even have to sneeze, for God's sake. Why the hell, when he comes back to, you know, Amon Ket again, does he have to, like, oh, I have to bring back the gods and send scorpions and monsters and I gotta send this at you and that at you and we're gonna unleash this and... No, just <laughs> use your magic or whatever. Unless that's what the people of Amonkhet are fighting back with. It's not perfectly clear on the other cards, but, I mean, you got people that clearly weren't there before, like the Kenras, you know, which are some kind of jackal-looking things. They're probably on Nicol Bolas' side, and then these blue dudes are probably on Nicol Bolas' side. Why does he need anybody? Did he watch too many movies and he just needs minions because he's evil? I don't get it. Just blow them all up, dude, or do whatever you came there to do, or whatever. That would be a crap storyline, but whatever. Hey, don't look at me. I'm not the one who made him way too powerful. So next up, we've got Sunder. It costs five. Return all lands to their owner's hands. Uh, not quite as bad as Armageddon, uh, especially if you can play, you know, an unlimited number of lands per turn or whatever, and you can undo it yourself. It's not particularly easy to do, but you'd have all game to do it because, uh, well, it costs five. Uh, because of that, not played that much. It's about a $4 card. They're really hitting up Urza's, like, a lot with this, which is really cool. It's a shame they're not worth more, but you never know. I mean, it might spark somebody to say, oh, that's a good card, and then it'll take off in popularity, and everybody will want uh, this version. I doubt it. Probably another $10, $15 card. Uh, next up, the Scorpion God. Hey, it's that guy. Well, I mean, that was already in my spoiler list. We already know what he does. He's overpowered as hell, and he's standard legal. A little bit of lower leak here. It looks like maybe he's escaping from some kind of tomb or temple where uh, Nicol Bolas, quote, kept them for later use or whatever he said. So that's kind of neat. Um, I think this will be worth a fortune, honestly, because that card's overpowered as all hell, so why not? Speaking of, oh, worth some money and actually properly lit artwork for once with a good white-black balance, um, Thoughtseize. Rest in peace, Thoughtseize. We miss you so much. You'll always be in our hearts. Just kidding. I hope you burn in hell. I don't want to see this card. I don't want to hear about this card. I don't ever want this to be a card. Um, if I get one, I'll be tempted to rip it up. This card was a bane of standards existence. It was a disease. So this utter disease that no human being should ever play, uh, floating in around 22 bucks on Card Kingdom, uh, the lower win version is still 48 for some reason. That must just be rarity and availability, whatever. I mean, they literally have one available. I don't know if that's even the real price. But uh, this one, <laughs> guaranteed 100 flat. I mean, that'll be its, like, book value. I don't know what it'll really sell for, but uh, probably not less than 50, let's be honest. So next up, we've got Threads of Disloyalty. Enchant creature with converted mana cost two or less. You control enchanted creatures. Straight up easy kidnapper. I like this one. And uh, it's double blue because, duh, it's a very, very, very blue mechanic. You do want to cut other people out of it. Um, really not sure what's going on in that artwork, but it's pretty trippy. So Betrayers of Kamigawa was when Threads of Disloyalty were uh, printed. So, well, not were, was. <laughs> it's not really plural, it's the name. But then again, more than one were printed. Hmm. Anyway, $6 card. I could see this floating in around 20 plus just because it's really cool. Next up, oh, also from Champions of Kamigawa. God, I don't even want to say the damn name of this piece of garbage. Through the Breach, $54.99 retail at the moment. Ding, 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 we've got a winner. That said, if I win the Powerball, I'm going to make it my life's goal to buy up every copy of this that exists and burn them. Once again, third card on my top 10 most hated cards that I wish never would have been printed through the breach. Want to know what it does? Well, you probably already read it because that's the only text that's readable on these damn things. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. No, not cast it. Did I say cast it? Because I don't remember saying cast it. No, you put it on the battlefield. That creature gains haste. Sacrifice that creature at the beginning of the next end step. And then, of course, splice into Ar Arcane because why the hell not? Yeah, that'll totally happen. Other than that, yeah, I hate this. It's it's just plain old five cost bring out Ulamog. Because look at the damn artwork. It's basically Ulamog. Okay, giant locust headed monster instead from the trailer. Who cares? All this card is built to do is degenerate broken crap. It should have been banned from modern 
ages ago. It is so unfair. It is the epitome of free casting. Marvel was just banned and this also cost five. I don't need to go on. This card can go freaking die. Oh, thank God that was the last one because they had seven more cards on my top 10 list that are the worst cards ever printed. No, I'm not going to make a video about them. Unlike Wedge, it's not just a meme at this point. It doesn't just kind of irk me, but I, I play it up in videos. No, I want these cards to all be destroyed. I want somebody to go back in time and prevent these cards from being a thing. They legitimately piss me off. By the way, Ensnaring Bridge is another one of them, and I do believe they just printed that as a masterpiece. Yay! I know, because I pulled one. So, they hit a couple of my all-time favorites, clearly. Um, but boy, did they dodge a lot of value. I mean, they themselves have finally acknowledged that there aren't enough uh, valuable cards left that haven't already been printed as masterpieces for them to keep making masterpieces that are worth money. So, in other words, they, they just don't exist. It's like, why don't they pick better cards? Because they've all been printed before. Now, I thought that they should keep these just because they're exciting to open, okay? Not everybody's like, oh, value, value, value. I mean, bare minimum, you got yourself, what, eight bucks? I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen one lower than even ten, honestly. Depends where you shop, though. But, um, you know, why not just keep it up and just go flavor? I mean, like, I haven't heard of half these damn cards. Well, okay, I haven't heard of, like, a quarter of them. But just because they're not valuable doesn't mean people aren't like, oh, I love that card, I remember that card, oh, I played against that card, I played with that card, oh, I want that. Well, if you want it and it's $200, <laughs> guess what? Screw you. Like, oh, I really want that Blood Moon, but uh, I don't have 70 bucks or whatever. Great, isn't that nice? But if you want something pretty to put in your commander deck and you don't want to spend more than like 15 bucks, I think quite a few of these aren't going to hit above 15 bucks. So right off the bat, hey. But boy, they really really need to ban boil and choke i think this is going to put it on people's radar and blue just because of this is going to be an even more unplayable color if you want to know why merfolk isn't a big thing and why that crappy island clone non-basic thing from uh, kamigawa is like 18 bucks it is almost exclusively because of these cards that's right an entire archetype was knocked out in fact an entire color was knocked out of modern just because of these. Okay, not not just because of these, but it's a factor. Somebody plays this, you lose, and boil costs like four and choke costs three. They really should not have focused on this. It's like narrowing in on one of their biggest embarrassments and biggest design mistakes in the history of the game. Where It's these cards. So those I completely disagree with on a philosophical level. Uh, the other one, it's like, oh, free casting, it's broken. I think they've learned their lesson on that at this point. But I also think that they chose uh, through the breach before they learned that. Thank God Aetherworks Marvel isn't somehow in here. Hey, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Okay, I just checked. No, it wasn't ever printed as a masterpiece. I thought it was, actually. Want to hear something funny? Planar Bridge was printed as a masterpiece. <laughs> Whoopsies, guess you targeted the wrong one. So what do you guys think? I mean, you get the overall flavor of this. It's Egyptian destruction, devastation, obviously. Hello, it's called Hour of Devastation. So massive blowing stuff up, screwing with stuff, preventing stuff, stopping stuff, overpowering stuff. Um, so that said, what would you put in here that they didn't? And what would you kick out? The correct answers are boil, choke, and through the breach, by the way. But I'd love to hear your opinions, so I'll leave it down in the comments section. Because remember, this isn't just a news channel, this is a discussion. I'm Philip DeFranco, I have like 4 million subs, and I totally don't read anything past the top 10 thumbed up comments anyway, so me telling you it's a discussion is a load of crap, unless you have notifications turned on, and you left a sarcastic comment that people found vaguely funny in the first 10 seconds. I'll see you guys next video.